Hi, this is chapter one, video number two uh, on adding integers. It goes with section 1.2 in your book, which is um, found on pages eight through 13. Remember, you can go to the online book, and if you look up and find section 1.2 in the online book, there are examples and videos and other things that can help you there too. So in this section, we're gonna talk about um, how we can recognize that adding opposites will make zero and also how to write and solve expressions with addition of integers. So we're adding integers, which we know are positives and negatives, adding integers in this section. So I know that there's no space for that on your paper. If you can just kind of add it to the top or where you have a little bit of room, um, I forgot to put, put those lines on there. So we're also going to add some vocabulary that also is not on your paper. So squeeze it in maybe at the bottom or on the side. Just a couple words I want to make sure we know. The first one is expressions. So expression is a word you've probably heard a lot in math already. When they say expression, they are talking about numbers, letters, and symbols. So it's numbers, letters, and symbols. So that could include addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, square roots, exponents, numbers, letters, and symbols, but without an equal sign. So an example of an expression could be n plus 2 or 3b minus 7. Any numbers, letters, and symbols together, but no equal sign. We don't know what it equals. It's just the numbers, letters, and symbols. And a lot of times they'll ask you to either evaluate or simplify an expression. That just means work it down, find an answer, um, work it out. So the other word we want to talk about in this section is additive inverse. And an additive inverse is really just a fancy way of talking about opposites. So opposites will always add to make zero. Additive inverses will always add up or combine together to make zero. So I have some examples here. Negative six and six, if I put them together, make zero. Seven and negative seven, if I put them together, make zero. Five, negative five and five together make zero. Those are all examples of additive inverse pairs. Okay, so now we're on your actual note packet, and I'm just going to take my notes on here, and you can follow along. So we've already talked about vocab, um, and we're ready to fill these in. We're going to start with adding integers when the signs are the same, so when they are both positives or when they are both negatives. So if you are adding two positives together or two negatives together, these are the rules. When you have two positives, so a positive plus a positive, it just combines to make, I'm going to write this out, to make a bigger positive. Right? That makes sense. If I have five apples and eight more apples, that combines to make 13 apples, all positives. Well, similarly, if I have a negative plus another negative, those are going to combine to make a bigger negative. Okay, there's a couple ways we think about this. Um, the first one, the first method, is going to be a chipboard. So on our chipboard, uh, we have a side that represents the negatives. So I'll put my negatives in. And the other side will be positives. So let's use a chipboard to um, show each of these expressions. Well, we're going to find the answer. So negative 2 and negative 7, that means I have two negatives, and then I add seven more negatives. And then you look at your chipboard, and you can see that we have nine negatives total. Or if I have the next one, five positives, and I add three more positives, I would end up with eight positives. And the next one, four negatives, and four more negatives, combine to make eight negatives. So my answer is negative eight. So that's using a chipboard. We can also 
use a number line. So I have two more examples where we'll use a number line. 7 plus 3. Well, two positives are going to combine to make a bigger positive. On the number line, if I start at 7 over here, and I add 3, I'm going to move to the right, and you can see that we end up at 10. Or what about with the negatives? If I start at negative 2, and I add 4 more negatives, we know it's going to combine to make a bigger negative, so we should get negative 6. Let's try that on the number line. Starting here at negative 2, and when I add negatives, I'm going to move to the left. Adding negatives mean I hop this way. So 1, 2, 3, 4. I have now moved, added negative 4, or moved 4 to the left, and I did end up at negative 6. So there are um, a few examples here. You're going to try these on your own right now. Pause the video and then come back. Go all the way to there and then come back and we'll check the answer. So pause now. Okay, let's go through the answers quick. Four negatives and three negatives give me seven negatives total. Six positives and two positives give me eight positives total. Five negatives and seven negatives give me 12 negatives total. And then on the number line, if I start at negative 3 and I add 6 negatives, I'm really hopping to the left. I'm going towards the negatives. Makes negative 9. And then if I start at 3 and I add 2, and then I add 3 more, I end up at 8. Okay, I switched to a clean copy here, but now read these three questions at the bottom of the page. Sorry, wrong side. <laughs> read these three questions right at the bottom of the page. Put your answers down now and then come back and check it. So pause now. Okay, so we should have, um, it could be in your own words, but we should have written down that when you combine or add two positives together, they make a bigger positive. When you add two negatives together, they combine to make a bigger negative. And just the general rule is that if you're adding two integers that have the same sign, they combine to make a bigger answer with that same sign. All right, flip your paper over to look at adding when the signs are different. So that means I'm adding two numbers and one of them's positive and one of them is negative. Doesn't matter which one comes first or the order that they're in, I just have one of each. So this is what you need to write down. Here's our rule. We're actually going to subtract the numbers. Subtract the numbers and keep the sign of whichever one was bigger. So this method makes a lot of sense with the chipboard. Let's do a couple together. Remember I have negatives on this side and positives over here. So on your chipboard, let's set it up. I have two negatives for this ne uh, negative two plus seven, two negatives and seven positives. When they say subtract, we're actually gonna look at the difference between those two numbers and see what's left over. I know I jumped ahead of my picture here. Let me explain it. We know that a positive and a negative together will combine to make zero. So a negative chip and a positive chip drop out and make zero. Another negative chip and another positive chip drop out and make zero. You're going to find all the pairs that you can cancel out and then see what's left. I'm left with five positives here. There are five more positives left on the board. That's my answer. Let's try another one. I've got five negatives plus three positives in the next one. So five negatives, three positives, I'm going to look for pairs, zero pairs, to cancel out. So a negative and a positive and a negative and a positive and a negative and a positive, I'll drop out, and I see what's left. I've got two negatives left. That follows my rule, because if I go back up here, 5 minus 3 means I have two, two extra negatives left over. Since the negative was bigger, I still have negatives left over. What about 4 plus negative 4? Well, four positives, four negatives, cancel out your zero pairs, negative and a positive and a negative and a positive and a negative and a positive and a negative and a positive all drop out. Everything's gone. There's nothing left. So that leaves me with zero. Okay, let's look at this one on the number line. If I start at seven and I add three negatives, well, start here at positive seven. And if I add three negatives, I'm actually going to hop to the left, three, and I end up at positive four. 
So yeah, I did seven minus three, and I'm still at, I'm still in the positives, but I subtracted the numbers to get four, positive four. How about negative two plus four? Well, ignore this. Starting at negative two, if I add four, you're gonna hop to the right, and I end up right here at positive two. So if I just use the rule, four minus two gives me two. The bigger number here was positives. I'm gonna end up in the positives, positive two. Okay, it's your chance to try a few. So try these on your own. You're gonna have to write in these problems so you know what to do. Go all the way to here, pause it now, and then we'll check. Okay, let's go through each one and, and make sure we understand how we get the answers. So I had five positives, seven negatives. Cross out all the pairs that you can make with a positive and a negative until they're gone on one side and see what's left. I have two negatives left over, so negative two. Here I had four negatives, one positive. I can cross out one pair. There are three negatives left. Negative three is my answer. Here I crossed off uh, the three negatives with three of the positives and had three positives left. Positive three is my answer. In the number lines, you can start at negative three and then add six. So I hopped to the right six and ended at positive three. And here I started at three and I added negative four. When you add negative four, you're adding negatives. You're moving to the left. And I ended up there at negative one. Okay, take a minute to read these questions at the bottom of the page and fill in your answers. Okay, pause, write them out in your own words, and then uh, we'll go over my answers when you're done. Okay, my first answer, when we add integers that have different signs, so one of them is positive and one of them is negative, you're gonna actually subtract the numbers. They, they go against each other, they cancel out. So the sign of the answer is gonna depend on whichever one was larger, whichever one you had more of to start with. So if I'm adding positives and negatives and I have more positives to begin with, my answer is gonna still be positive. If I had more negatives to begin with, my answer is gonna be negative. That's what we should have down here. So when you combine a positive and a negative, but the positive was a larger value, you're gonna get a positive answer. So on the chipboard, that was because we still had positive chips left over. We had more positive chips to begin with, so after we took out all the zero pairs, there were still positives. That's your answer. On the number line, if I am, the positive is bigger, I'm gonna be moving more to the right. I'm gonna cross over and go into the positive numbers on my number line. What about if I'm adding two numbers, a positive and a negative together, but the negative is larger? Well, I'm gonna end up with a negative answer. And on the chipboard, that was because I had negative chips left over. I had more negative chips to start with. And on the number line, if you add negatives, you're moving to the left. So you're gonna move past zero down into the negatives if, you're moving, if your negative number is bigger. You're gonna end in the negatives on the number line. So I know this isn't enough practice for it to probably sink in, but we'll do a lot more examples in class. And if you have this much written down and started, uh, that's a good start. Thanks for listening.